So a lot of people say to me, boy, why go to Antarctica? It's cold, it's windy, it's dry, it's actually outright miserable, it's the coldest place on the planet. Why go there? What's the interest? Well, a long time ago, when I was an assistant professor, so over 20 years ago, I was struck by a statistic, and it is this. Most of the planet, some 90%, is like ice water or colder, which is like your refrigerator or colder. And I wanted to understand how life works in the cold biosphere. And this year we chose 25 of what I would like to call the best and the brightest graduate students and postdoctoral fellows from around the world to join a core group of faculty on a research expedition to Antarctica. What I'm looking to find by studying the cold biosphere is trying to understand the secrets to maybe even the early evolution of life, especially complex life forms. We think that much of the early evolution of animal forms on the planet occurred around the time that the planet was still pretty cold. That's the historical perspective. The modern perspective is, with the changing planet occurring so quickly, with all the debates about environmental change, climate change, global warming, how will life adapt to that, particularly complex life forms? Will they be able to adapt and change quickly enough with the changing planet? We study marine organisms, because there's very, very few animals that actually can live on the continent of Antarctica. So most of the animal life in Antarctica is in the oceans. And that ocean is covered by ice. So when we go there, we punch a hole in the ice with special drills, just wide enough to, to be able to have a human being drop into the hole of the ice. And when they drop down into the other side, they're in freezing cold waters. One of the most amazing things that you are struck with is the diversity of life that's down there. There's a huge diversity of life under the polar ice sheets. And the aha moment for me is the realization that we are capable of changing the entire geosphere with the way we approach it. And I think very passionately for me when I'm teaching, say, freshman biology, is to try and have a section in those courses to make everybody aware as to how Mother Nature responds to the stresses and pressures that are put on by human activities. And as I like to say to the USC students, you're going to be the leaders of the future and environmental literacy is going to be key to making the right choices.